I'm going to give um, a brief presentation on Charles Crocker. Uh, he is known as a shoemaker poet. And in this presentation, um, I will talk a little bit about um, his biography and some um, uh, uh, pedagogical aspects to teaching laboring uh, class poets. Um, yeah, so he was born in 1797. Um, uh, in my study uh, for this semester, I'm looking at um, the first edition title, which is called The Veil of Obscurity, The Levant and Other Poems. Um, it's through three editions. Um, the, there is a new edition um, and also a final complete edition. They have different titles. Uh, so in total, there are five editions of poems. He's from Chichester and the um, uh, time period uh, that he worked was in the mid 1800s. Um, there's a few things that I'm interested in. Um, I wondered why he uh, was very prolific early on in his, um, in his career. Uh, but then for the last 20 years, he didn't really produce much. Uh, and uh, he was also, um, he also never uh, made changes to his poems and he never wrote a new preface, even though he had uh, several uh, editions. And he was very famous uh, back in the day, and, but then he became obscure. Uh, and he's also interesting fact that he's known as the only casualty of the collapse of the Chichester Cathedral Spire in 1861, although he wasn't actually injured uh, from that, um, but he did die uh, later. And this is the cathedral in its aftermath. Charles Crocker was working um, for the cathedral at that time. And this is a profile picture of him from his 1841 um, book. This is the called the third edition. And uh, you can see uh, Chichester is there in Sussex, England. Um, and uh, it's um, yeah, it stands at the extreme west of the country. Uh, and uh, it's approached by the Roman road from London. And uh, yeah. And then here is a map from 1794. This is just before Crocker was born. And you can see where Sussex is located in Chichester there on the map. Uh, let me talk about his biography. Um, he had um, five brothers and sisters. Four of them were half siblings. I haven't been able to, to identify the dates of his mother. Um, I'm not quite sure if the mother listed is uh, a stepmother or his actual mother. I believe it is a stepmother and I can't find his real mother um, there. So. Uh, he was a second um, of the children uh, of Henry Crocker and his probably his first wife. Um, and uh, Henry Crocker remarried to Elizabeth Cable, and they had four four more children, which are Crocker's um, half siblings. Um, when he was twelve years old, um, the family was very poor, um, so back in the day they sent them off to be apprenticed, and he was apprenticed to a shoemaker. Uh, during this time, it's not quite uh, certain when, but he did start composing poems in his head. He never wrote anything down. Uh, in 1818, he was um, 21 years old. He married uh, Phoebe Woolgar. She was a few years older than him. Uh, the next year, uh, his daughter Fanny was born. Uh, and then the year after, his wife dies. Uh, uh, this was, uh, I believe, a very turbulent time in his life. And I think he did compose, and he's, this is when he started writing down a lot of his poems. Um, and he did marry later to Mary Heath in 1825. And uh, as you can see, he had many children, um, but many of them died. Uh, so his daughter, uh, 
Mary, also known Mary, is born. And uh, in 1829, he had another son that was born uh, just before he published his first volume of poetry. So he was, uh, what, 33 years old uh, when that happened. Um, the next year, um, they had a son, Charles, um, who died as an infant. Um, in 1834, he had another son named Charles, Charles William. And the same year, he published a second edition of poetry. This included some new poems. In 1835, um, his son, John, uh, died. He was only six years old. Uh, in 1837, uh, he had another son named Henry. And he also published a new edition of poetry. Uh, this was, uh, these, this book of poems was different from the first and second edition. Um, so it was totally new poetry. Um, in 1839, he quit shoemaking. Uh, he, even though he said he would never quit shoemaking, he did quit and joined um, his publisher as a bookseller. Uh, and uh, in 1840, his, uh, another son died. Uh, in 1841, um, he took some of the poems from his second edition, I'm uh, sorry, some, he took some of the poems from his new edition and combined those with um, his other poetry and called that a third edition, which was much more expanded. Uh, in 1845, he quit book selling and joined the cathedral as a sexton and then soon became a bishop's verger. He was uh, very uh, knowledgeable about the cathedral's architecture, so much so that he wrote a book about it. He wrote a nonfiction book, um, and it's called A Visit to Chester Cathedral, and he actually did tours. Um, and his, uh, his first granddaughter was born in 1849. That must have brought him some joy after seeing many of his children die. And he had another grandchild that was born, Charles, his namesake, and um, in 1860, um, he published his complete edition. He did write um, a very short um, preface to that. Uh, and the reason he uh, wrote, uh, sorry, the reason he um, published his complete edition uh, was so that he could help um, support his family. Because back then, you could make some money uh, from publishing poetry. Um, but uh, just a year later, in 1861, February 17th, um, a historical event uh, in Chichester history happened, and that was the, uh, the spire fell. And uh, the spire was actually showing damage. Um, they, were, they supported it, and that morning they noticed some new cracks. Uh, they were able to evacuate everyone before it collapsed. Uh, but it but it did collapse and um, it was uh, it wasn't long before Crocker died and it said that he died um, basically of uh, of heartbreak um, and uh, but before that he he was able to see another granddaughter um, born Mary um, and this is a family tree that's still in progress that um, I'm working on on ancestry.com you can see uh, Crocker here in black and um, his first wife there and his siblings and um, his uh, descendants. He had a big family. Uh, there's some interesting facts about his, um, his wife after he died. Uh, she did remarry and uh, she had um, another son. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about some pedagogical things and uh, this is uh, a, a, a short quote from uh, Binfield and Christmas's uh, book on uh, how to teach uh, working class poets, uh, pedagogical exploration and innovation. And this is, uh, this is how I see um, some of the benefits of teaching um, such poets is that uh, uh, students are able to um, you know, explore research methods and, um, you know, uh, become more active and learn about analysis. Uh, whereas m most of those skills would be taught in science classes, students can use those um, in researching laboring class poets. Uh, 
and they learned that uh, not all study is literary. There's also bibliographical study, um, historical study, things like that, um, textual study. And uh, it's quite difficult to get some of this information on these old, old poets. So they get an appreciation for history um, and they realize that, um, you know, uh, when looking at some of the textual, textual differences in uh, the poems uh, that uh, writers, you know, don't just write uh, a final draft. Um, poets don't just write a perfect poem, but it takes many revisions and they can see how um, uh, poetry has been changed and not just by the poet themselves, but also by um, publishers. And uh, uh, they can see how uh, that, uh, uh, you know, writing a poem is not just a simple act. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.